Last year, your company was evaluated at $12 billion. What does that feel like? You would think that there is this kind of like safety net feeling that you have, but it's not there. Hey, my name is Brian Park, and I'm a comedian based here in New York City. You know, in the past I've applied to tech jobs, but I've never really made it past the AI screening level. So I convinced the fine folks at Exits Media to let me host this show that you're watching on YouTube as a way to provide me access to these tech founders and hopefully maybe get a job because as you know what they say, it's about who you know, not what you know. Pedro, great to meet you. How are you? Hey, what's going on? Yeah. Sorry, sorry to keep you waiting. No waiting worries on? at all. What is Brex? Uh, Brex is a company that builds corporate cards and spend management software. And our mission is to empower employees everywhere to make better financial decisions. You know, we started building corporate cards yep. back in 2017, and we started to serve this cohort of you know these tech startups in the Bay Area, you know that were growing really fast. Mm -hmm. And then we realized that these companies were growing and becoming the large companies of the future, right? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, as they became larger, they had more employees and more people globally, right? Not just in the U.S. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they needed a solution to help them manage spend. So how do you know we have all these people making financial decisions, all these okay. people purchasing things, you know, wanting to you know do different things across the company. So how mm -hmm. do you make sure we're making the right decisions at scale? Uh, and that's ultimately what we do. So we started with the card, and then we build all the software that enables right. them to do them. And then the ultimate vision is how do we help every employee across the company to make great financial decisions that helps the company be more successful. It sounds like a very unique problem that's specific to a certain type of individual. In your case, like you're a founder, you don't mm -hmm. have you know, a ton of credit history, but yeah. then you have funding from investors. Yeah. Yeah. But in the beginning, yeah, it was a very small niche of, you know, roughly 70,000 companies that we could serve. Um, and, you know, today, you know, one in every three startups in the U.S. uses Brex, which is something we're very proud of. But, uh, but what we realized is larger companies had that issue as well. Right. Uh, and the larger you became, the more challenging it was to manage uh, all spend and the company because it had more employees and more people making those decisions. Right, right. So the problem was, you know, even bigger for these larger companies than than just like the startups that we were starting with. Us. You came up with a name for Brex using a name generator. Mm hmm. Because mm. most of the dot com domains that are, you know, good words, pronounceable in English, yeah, you know, short, were taken by the twenty five plus years that the internet has been around. Yeah. Um, so what we did is we looked at a list of what are dot com domains pronounceable in English at a reasonable price. When it comes to like copywriting and choosing names within the company, are you open to a little bit more levity and yeah. injecting some humor into Brooks? Of course. Yeah? We'd love help that. There, yeah. There you go. You heard that, right? You're looking for like maybe a comedy slant to some things? Yeah, if you have any ideas of how to make Brex more more fun. Okay. We're we're down. Okay, cool. You you have a co-founder, yeah. correct? And you two met over Twitter. That is true. How old were you when you guys met online? 15. What were you guys yeah, so talking we were, about on we Twitter? We were uh, discussing programming text editors, and okay. we decided to start a company together before having met in person. You know, we had the idea of like, why don't we build a bank here? But then a bank is kind of hard because people have to give you money, right? And that's like a much harder thing to do uh, than the opposite. And then we thought of right. like, you know, what is, what's something that all these companies need and, and can't get? And corporate cards was the answer. You know, we, mm. we saw that they all needed a corporate card, they tried to apply for one, but they got rejected by the bank. But they had money in the bank, right? They had raised money from investors, they had money from YC. Yeah. Um, and uh, so they, they were credit worthy, they could pay their bills. So it was yeah. just a, a sort of a, a fault in the system. And then the idea of find Brex was why don't we just use their bank account data to underwrite them and give them a card um, mm. their workspace on that, right? And then uh, we, you know, they connected their bank accounts and they got a card and that was the, that was the original product and um, a lot of people needed it. How old were you when you developed this first product, which was a credit card for startups? Uh, I was 21. You're based in New York. Yeah. And Enrique is based in California? That's right. I'm curious, like, what is your general approach and philosophy to decision making? I think one of the things that I always say is, like, you know, the hard decisions are, are rarely, uh, you know, based on logic. Because if they were based on logic, they would be easy, right? There's a lot of people that are smart out there. Right, 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 right. So I think like those decisions that are very like, hey, there's path A or path B, and there's not really an obvious decision, you can't really get your logic around it. I think right. intuition is a very powerful force that we try to stay attuned to. That's one thing I really admired about your leadership style is that, um, as you mentioned like in, in your video Catharsis, um, you can see it on the Brex YouTube channel. You're very transparent and you lead through vulnerability. There's a stigma around mental health being 
or means that you're weak or means that you're you know not strong or you're, you're less capable and I think it's 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 you know almost the opposite I think it's like we spend all this time talking about physical health and you know eating healthy you know exercising right. and doing all those things for our bodies but then you <laughs> right, live right. in your mind mm. and you pay zero attention to it and, and I think like it's sort of a especially the founder level I think it's a necessary condition to doing the job well and then I started talking to a few founders and, and sharing my story and they were like oh wow like I'm going through the exact same thing I had the exact same problem I started seeing that a lot of the reason why you know a lot of founders and startups didn't sort of realize their full potential was because they quit prematurely because of mental health you know I think of course product mm. market fit and the product not working was the number one reason but I think right. after that mental health was the second biggest how am I doing you're good good interviewer yeah. is that a quality that you look for in future hires absolutely so what's on the horizon for Brex I think the biggest thing for us now is you know we're serving these uh, larger and larger companies with more uh, more employees more spend more uh, uh, complexity, more global. I think more broadly, uh, you know, I think we want to help companies make better financial decisions uh, across the board right, and really increase the ROI of every dollar they spend. And, and that enables companies to, you know, do more for their customers, save more money, pay employees better, and I think ultimately helps them achieve their own, own missions, right? And, and we play a small role in that. It sounds like you're also very open to new hires in the marketing department. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, well, yeah. I, I don't want to hold you up on your meeting. No worries. But, um, yeah, well, great we'll, to meet you, Ryan. Well, great, great to meet you. Yes. Um, I'm sure I'll see Get you around. around. Uh, yes, and I'll, I'll, I'll be seeing a lot more of you at the Brex office. Amazing. All right, folks, so today I learned that running a $12 billion company isn't as easy as it looks. Shocker, right? Well, luckily for me, Pedro still wants me on the team. So up next, I need to go to San Francisco and win over his co-founder, Enrique, and show him why I put the Cerebral in Cerebral Valley. Enrique? Hey, welcome. Hey, what's Thanks going on, Thanks for coming man? over. Thanks Good for, to uh, see you. Great to see you, too. Thanks for yeah. being a part of the Praying for Exit show. Of course, happy to be here. Dream big is our first value for Brex. I'd say neon signs are like a big neon thing. Neon is the value. So this is inspire customer love, which is also a very important value for us. It's not only about doing a good job, it's about inspiring love for the product and the brand. Okay, so this is the, the boardroom. All right. So, so this is where the deals go down. Okay, see, um, I see another one of these signature neon signs. Yeah, here. Impatient Optimist. This is Pedro's favorite. We're not supposed to have favorites, but this is definitely his favorite. Um, we copied it from Bill Gates. Okay. And it's about this idea of, you know, you need to have urgency and go fast, but be optimistic that everything's gonna turn out great. This was the first physical transaction we ever did. So this was the first card that we then uh, put it into a chip and uh, became like a whole physical <laughs> transaction. Everyone signed it, you know? Okay, this is, this is very cool. This is also very SF, how your ah, first ah, transaction ah, is Blue Bottle Coffee. Ah, <laughs> but making a credit card from scratch seems like such a daunting undertaking. <laughs> I mean, I know you had previous experience in Brazil with like a payment processing app, but was it not? Honestly, it was that. It was like, that was, we already knew a lot about credit cards. Which is why it's even crazier to me because you made that first app when you were 16, 15 in Brazil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, this is kind of controversial. Mm. But I think that most successful cat founders that I know were slightly arrogant at some point. Like, think about it. You're coming and you're saying, I'm going to go build one of the largest companies in the world. Right. And you really need to say that with a straight face. Yeah. You know, after like, you know, the statistics are at only 0.00001% of the companies actually become that. Right, right. You deeply need to believe it. And to do it, you really deeply need to believe that you're like slightly better than all the other people trying because otherwise, of course, you know, they'd be doing it. You know, when you are going into something that is so risky, whether it be like, I'm trying to become the best comedian in the world, or I'm trying to start a billion dollar company, you need to be delusional. Yeah, like, I absolutely agree. You have like, and so I, I agree with this hot take that you have. Now, have there been moments through the course of Brex's growth that have like humbled you? Oh, absolutely. I was definitely believe I could do it, but I didn't believe I could do it alone. And I really felt that the best way for me to learn and to grow and to keep going is to have amazing people around me. And I always believe that like, you know, it's better to divide to go further than to try to keep more to myself and right, to keep right. more to spotlight to myself and to keep more money for myself. Like, I really do believe that you know, spreading is the best way to go further. Last year, your company was evaluated at $12 billion. What does that feel like? You would think that there is this kind of like safety net feeling that you have, but it's not there. 
And the reality is you always set the expectation for yourself higher. So what does being a $12 billion company mean? It right. means that in order to, all my investors who invested $12 billion to be happy, now it needs to become a $60 billion company. And dude, it's really fucking hard to like add $48 billion of value, you know? Like it's yeah. like really hard. And if one day we're, you know, we're, we're lucky enough to be a $60 billion company, that means that eventually we need to be a $120 billion company. And dude, you know, another 60, right? So like, Every time you get to the next milestone, right, the right. expectations rise and it gets harder and harder and harder. And now it's not the expectations of just me and my buddies and 10 people. Everyone in this company has stock no. and they look all look at you and they're like, it's you, dude. <laughs> dude <that laughs> so is... what are we doing? <laughs> you know, like... Do you still play spike ball in the park? You really need to learn to compartmentalize. Otherwise you go crazy. This is the 12 hours I'm going to work. This is when I'm gonna think about this. You right, know, like, right. then I need, when I'm off, I need to be off. We do credit cards and spend management software for enterprises and startups, right? Like, how do you get motivated by that? And mm -hmm. how do you inspire all your teams to get motivated by that? And the reality that I learned is that it's, in the end of the day, it's all about your customer's customer, right? So, okay. if you get um, DoorDash, for example, it's one of our customers. DoorDash has an awesome mission, right? Like they're getting food delivered all over the world. And uh, I went to like a small city one time and I was talking and you know, she's like, oh, we're in DoorDash. I was like, oh, they're a customer of ours. Tell me about how you use it. And she's like, yeah, no, it was, it was great because you know, there was only like really unhealthy food right next to my office. Mm. So it was really hard for me to stay healthy. You know, like there was only Dunkin' Donuts and a couple other things. Sure. And now with DoorDash, you know, I can get like my salad, you know, and you know, she's like really getting into shape and health and everything. I thought it was awesome. And the reality is like, Brex, we're part of that team, you know? They didn't do it by themselves. They have Apple computers, they have AWS servers, they have Brex card expense management. Mm. But in the end, like when they deliver that salad to that lady, we're part of that team too. You can be arrogant, but you can't believe that you're gonna get there alone. And you know, with these lofty ambitions, you need great collaborators and team players to join you on this and I keep we keep touching on this space analogy on this like rocket ship, right? Like who do you like who do you look for in future talent or like people to collaborate with at Brex? You know, it evolved a lot, and I think in the beginning um, we tried to get a lot of people who were from the right brands and the mm. right schools, and the right everything. But now, after actually, especially where we after we went remote, we see there's talent everywhere. You know, we're hiring amazing people in Brazil, Canada, Israel, Mexico, all state 50 states in the U.S. You know, so we really are looking to leave the talent is everywhere, and we can find them in all these places. And would you say that you might be feeling some talent in a 10-foot radius of you at this current moment? Um, I just, look, just, just, I'm just looking at the other 10 feet, you know? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely seeing some talent over here. In, in other words, you're saying like you're open to more non-traditional hires. Definitely open to more non-traditional hires. With sure. perhaps a background in comedy. Mm, comedy would be very interesting. People like to laugh, you know? It's very engaging. Resume, like, it, uh, what's the... We'll, we'll be in touch, we'll be in touch. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, all right, well, it was a okay, pleasure. Man. Yeah, yeah, we'll be in touch, okay? See you. Um, do I email or? Well, well, we'll talk to you, don't worry about it. Okay, yeah. cool. Bye, bye, bye. Thanks, man. See you. <sighs> I think I kind of fumbled it at the end. Well, luckily there's a lot of companies in Silicon Valley, so uh, on to the next, I guess.